Hi, you're watching Alex Lab channel. This is the second part of the season about composite materials. And today we will discuss basic technology for the manufacture of composite parts. I will show you how to model a part of a simple shape in AutoCAD, print its elements on a 3D printer, assemble and process the mold for laminating, and then use it to make light composite parts, by example, lightweight armor plates for protective motorcycle equipment. All books, PDF guides, drawings and 3D models are available for channel members, so let's begin! In my previous video I showed you how to 3D model an exact copy of yourself using a 3D scan of your own body as a base. Such a virtual or 3D printed model comfortable to use as a dummy to create and scale protective equipment, exosuit, cosplay costumes and ordinary textile clothing with the most precise fit. But before proceeding to detailed modeling and manufacturing of geometrically complex part of an anatomical suit, I want to show you how to work with composite materials and make simple parts from fiberglass and carbon fiber. Also in the next couple of videos I will show you how to measure the strength and hardness of DIY composite parts using hand tools for tests. This series of videos will be useful and interesting to everyone who works with composites regardless of whether do you make carbon fiber RC cars body or full-size cars and boats. Also in this series I decided to show the process of studying and developing a particular technology which in previous projects has always remained behind the scenes. Ten years ago in order to make composite part of complex shape it was first necessary to manually make a mold or a matrix for laminating. It was long, dusty, expensive and unprofitable, especially if the final part was needed in just one copy. Much more time and materials were spent not on the composite part, but to create a mold that after one use could be thrown away. And most importantly, there were no talk of millimeter accuracy, since almost all steps were done manually. Two technological megatrends have changed everything. Programs for 3D modeling have become at the same time powerful and affordable for every PC user, but the most important thing is 3D printing technologies and distribution of cheap and reliable 3D printers. They have made it possible for fast production of complex parts with high precision without a single tool. Thus, if more recently for the manufacture of the matrix a well-equipped workshop and several specialists of various profiles were required, then today the matrix can be done on the one desktop with basic knowledge of 3D modeling and zero material processing skills. And before proceeding to the development of the model, a few words about the sponsors of this video, because the only sponsors are you. Becoming a channel member on YouTube or Patreon, you not only help to develop my channel, but you also get access to all the PDF instructions and blueprints of Alex Lab. Different models of Ironman reactors to generate hydrogen for repulsors and other scientific experiments, building instructions of the basic model of the exoskeleton, 3D model of the Ironman helmet fully prepared for printing on a 3D printer, which I used to make a full metal helmet, a hydrogen booster for an engine that will make your bike much faster than the manufacturer claims, kilowatt electrolyzer for decarbonization of the engine and hydrogen cutting of metal, guidebook for calculation and manufacturing your own electrolyzers, practical electroplating book to cover any complex detail with metal, and of course a book on 3D modeling in which you will find even more details on the topic of this video. Ok, let's go further. Different 3D editors are suitable for modeling different parts. The main difference is the logic of construction. If the dimension of the part are exactly given by numbers and the curves are given by equations, if the part can be built according to a flat drawing and then extrude the desired volumes, if it is a part of a mechanism, chassis or frame, then it will be more convenient to model such a part in editor like AutoCAD, SolidWorks or Autodesk Inventor. If the part doesn't have specified dimensions, if sculpting methods are used for construction, if the part needs to be built from the photos, if it is a fairing and aerodynamic shape, the outer part of the body of a suit or a car, then editors like Blender, 3D Max or ZBrush are more suitable. The part we are making today is a lightweight composite armor plate of the SAPI standard L size. Its dimensions and bending radius are given by an exact drawing, therefore we model such a detail in AutoCAD. First we make a flat drawing according to the exact dimensions. Then we draw out the polygon, make a section with a given radius and thickness, 
and as a result of the intersection of two elementary constructions, we obtained the finished model. After modeling, we prepare the part for printing. Without leaving AutoCAD, we divide the detail into parts depending on the size of your 3D printer table, and then export the file to the STL file. In the case of armor plate, we do not need high detail, but in the other case specify additional settings for correct export to STL file from AutoCAD. In the slicer program, we set the settings for the printer and send it to print. For this simple part any kind of plastic will work – PLA, ABS or PTG. In most cases I use PLA because it is cheaper than others, it never has problems with adhesion to the table like ABS, it is easier to sand and glue and it's quite elastic for the separation of parts from mold. Manually or on machine, green the end of the part that will be glued together. Remove dust and degree the part with a solvent. Use a tape to accurately position the parts before gluing. Using Cosmofan glue, connect the parts together. You can also further strengthen the printed part soldering the seams with a thread of plastic and soldering iron, but this operation is not required if you use a silo tape as a separating layer. Lightly sand the front side of the part with an eccentric machine or by hand to get rid of minor print defects. This time, as a form for laminating, we will use the front side with the outer curve. To prevent fiberglass from sticking to the mold tightly, a separating layer is required. Usually to create a separating layer, several layers of special mold wax are applied to the surface. But if the shape is a simple and a slightly curved plane, then I recommend using regular sticky tape. Such a layer of tape is cheaper than special tools, applied faster, doesn't require several hours of drying, and most importantly, it ensures that the composite doesn't stick to the mold. When the part is coated with the release layer, we proceed to the preparation of the composite. In general, a huge number of materials can be attributed to composites from plywood and reinforced concrete to dental polymers, but we will focus on those materials which allow to create light and strong body parts. Composite materials are materials that consist of several layers. Filler layer, for example epoxy, and matrix layer, fiberglass, carbon, kevlar or metal mesh. Combination of layers with different properties in one material allows you to get a part of a complex shape with completely new qualities different from the characteristics of each layer separately. For our part, we will use structural fiberglass cloth and structural epoxy resin. These are the most accessible materials and they will give optimal ratio of weight, strength and price for the first project. Straighten and smooth a roll of fiberglass on the table. Use the printed form as a template for making sheets, making a margin of couple of centimeters on each side. As well as any fabric, on the cutting line, fiberglass begins to spread into fibers and stretch in different directions. This becomes a problem when we start working with resin. To avoid spreading, we use 20 and 50 mm masking tape. The tape secures the edges of the fabric, prevents the fibers from unraveling and makes all next steps cleaner and more convenient. The number of layers depend on the required protection class. For shockproof elements of bicycle equipment, 3 to 6 layers are sufficient. For motorcycle equipment, from 6 to 10 layers, because in this case the protection class depends on the speed at which the impact can occur. The topic of strength will be discussed in more detail in the fourth part. Weight all cut sheets on a kitchen scale. The total weight of epoxy and hardener must match the weight of all fabric sheets. For example, 300 grams fiberglass and 300 grams epoxy with hardener, plus 5% margin for adding. If you are working with structural epoxy as thick as caramel, then I recommend preparating it in a small portions of a maximum of 100 gram. After adding a hardener, such a resin begins to thicken quickly and this complicates the application of the last layers. Carefully at least 4 minutes mix the resin with a hardener in the first glass, then pour the composition into the second glass and mix for 4 minutes there, to avoid unmixed resin volumes, which always remain on the edges 
and bottom of the first glass. Mix only by hand without the help of a mixer, so as not let the air into the resin. Immediately after mixing, proceed to lamination. Apply a thin layer of resin to the surface of the mold, evenly distribute the composition so that there are no unfilled areas on the surface. Slowly and carefully position and apply the first layer of fiberglass. Smooth the fabric from the center to the edges, making sure there is a small margin on each side on the fabric and it hangs a couple of centimeters from the form. Smooth the fabric with a plastic cut with slow movements from the center to the edges so that the resin comes to the surface and all the air comes out. Apply the next layer of resin and repeat the previous steps with all other layers. It is important to position and center each layer so that the whole sandwich doesn't gradually move out to one of the sides. Gently working with the brush and cut, evenly distribute resin on each layer, then the strength of the pot will be the same over all areas. It is also important to apply the resin a little beyond the edges, so that when cutting off excess material, the edges do not fray, but remain one single plate. After the end of lamination, leave the pot for a day or for the time required for the complete polymerization of your resin. You can also put the pot next to the battery, as every 10 degrees accelerate polymerization by half. Before separating the mold from the pot, draw a line with a marker. Then using 3D printed plastic mounts, separate the pot from the mold. Tear off the adhesion tape with the remnants of epoxy and the mold is completely ready for the next part. With the help of a grinder and cutting disc, cut off the excess material. It is better to do it outside in a well-ventilated area, in any case using a full set of protection from gloves, googles, headphones and, most importantly, a respirator. In our case, the parts will be located inside the body armor and do not need further processing. We seal the edges with reinforced tape and insert the plates into the unloading tactical vest. Thus, with a minimum set of tools, it is possible to manufacture any parts of complex shape with any ratio of weight and strength. Protective equipment made with 3D printer and composite materials can be tailored exactly to fit and under the specific strength requirements of the rider. Lightweight protection makes it easier to overcome obstacles and reduce the load on the joints, which is especially critical when traveling on a unicycle, scooter or any other means of individual mobility. Ultimately, the lower the weight of protective equipment, the more weight can be given to the batteries and pilot's own weight at the same total mass. Please ask questions in the comments and look for the answers in my pinned comment under the video. Thank you for watching and many thanks to Alex Lab channel members, because only your sponsorship makes it possible for my videos to come out. In the next video, we will also analyze in detail the manufacturing technology of carbon fiber parts with a more complex profile and high detail. See you next week and good luck with your own projects!